Catherine Matthews, the Division Director of Urogynecology and Reconstructive Pelvic Surgery at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. I'm a physician who's involved, involved with clinical trials, and I've been asked to answer a series of questions about clinical trials that may help patients have a clearer understanding of exactly what they are, what they mean, and what risks and benefits are involved. So what exactly is a clinical trial? Well, essentially, this is a controlled human experiment, either of a pharmaceutical device or a medication that may be innovative, it may be new, it may provide something different from what's currently available, but before being introduced into the marketplace, it needs to be tested carefully in human beings to determine the particular risks and benefits that may be involved. Typically, the most research that is done is at academic medical centers where doctors are basically working because they're interested in participating in um, new discovery. And so uh, usually, especially in the, in the United States, uh, most clinical trials are conducted at academic medical centers. There are some private practices that, can, that uh, participate in clinical trials, but I would say in large measure that academic medical centers are very much involved in clinical trial design and uh, implementation. Are they paid by someone? Certainly. Research is very expensive, and trials can either be paid for by uh, the government uh, or they can be paid by private companies. Um, if you have the government pay for the research, there's a very rigorous process that, that is uh, undertaken to get government-funded uh, dollars. Um, and so I would say that in this uh, growing day and age of difficulty procuring those funds, more and more private drug companies are, are funding clinical trials. It's important to recognize that when a company uh, funds a device or funds a, a medication, um, that they may not necessarily be tied to the study design or to the results. And so a lot of times, especially at institutions like this, uh, we may receive funds to uh, study a, a certain device, but then don't tie the results with the company, so we basically own the data. Since safety and effectiveness of a drug or device are being tested, how am I protected as a participant in a clinical trial from risk? How am I assured that I'm being told about all the risks associated with the study, especially the most unpleasant side effects or even harmful outcomes? We are mandated by our institutional review boards uh, at every institution conducting research to fully explain to patients all of the risks that are involved with the drug or with the device. The one potential problem that patients may encounter, however, are the unknown side effects that we don't yet know anything about. It was important, what's important for patients to recognize, however, is that typically there ve there's very, very stringent monitoring. And so if somebody has experienced an adverse event that was unanticipated, we have special safety monitoring boards that are immediately notified about this. And so that study investigators can be educated about this and other patients can be potentially told before many people suffer from a similar result. Will the document I'm asked to sign releasing the doctors and the location from any liability be, be understandable uh, by me, or is it so lengthy and so legal that it's impossible to digest? Well, this is a question about the informed consent document that we ask patients to sign before they uh, start a clinical trial. Uh, and essentially, we're mandated by our local uh, review boards to uh, provide a consent document that's written in a very understandable language by someone with an average edu education. So we're actually asked to leave out all the typical medical and legal words uh, that confuse people. In providing this informed consent document, we're mandated to give patients numbers that they can call of independent people who are not involved with the trial so that they can report anything that they think is unethical or incorrect, numbers to contact if they're having any problems. And so I think that um, people have put in place a mechanism to safeguard uh, patients in these circumstances and give them uh, extensive avenues um, to, to safeguard them against uh, problems. Many Americans have heard about the famous Tuskegee experiment uh, years ago in which men were in, in intentionally infected with syphilis uh, and were then left untreated. How am I safeguarded against such unethical uh, insults? I'm very grateful to say that I'm practicing medicine in a time where, where significant advances have been made in the ethics of medicine, and this sort of thing is absolutely uh, not tolerated. 
uh, in modern day America. We have um, in place uh, an extreme checks and balances system with research to make sure that everything is conducted ethically, uh, the patients are safeguarded against any potential risks that uh, we, we come about, that we uncover in, in, in doing a new drug or device trial. Uh, and so I would say that um, the likelihood that somebody is going to be exposed to extreme risk in this day and age is very unlikely. Well, the reason that people are motivated to become enrolled in a clinical trial is classically because they have a disease state that is not currently being well served by medications that exist, or there may be a medication or a drug device that may offer something that's an additional advantage over what currently exists. So clinical trial patients are different than ordinary patients, and they were basically um, doing an experiment, uh, and therefore the ordinary treatment is always an option, but the new potentially uh, innovative treatment uh, is what's being offered to you as, as part of the study design. No one is obligated to remain enrolled until the trial ends. You can drop out at any point. Uh, there is no financial obligation of any patient. We like to enroll people for the full extent of the trial so we can fully monitor for unanticipated uh, risks and unanticipated benefits. Uh, and so we really try and enroll people to the, to the full end, but no one's obligated for the extent of the clinical trial. Clinical trials last variable amounts of time, uh, and patients are uh, educated about this at the very beginning as to what we expect uh, in terms of the uh, outcomes and how long we expect to follow patients. Part of the incentive of being in a trial is to have access to the very latest technology and treatment. Is there always the risk that I may be randomly put into a placebo group and get nothing? Certainly as part of a drug trial, there is a good chance, there's a 50% chance that this is the way the study is designed, that you might get the sugar pill, the placebo pill that has nothing, versus the drug pill. Um, when you're doing a surgical device trial, it's very unlikely that a placebo would be involved because it's hard to do a sham surgery on someone. Um, it's important to recognize that uh, unless we really compare no treatment with the drug treatment, uh, we won't really get a true measure of what the actual risk and benefit of the medication would be. So yes, while there's a risk that you may get nothing, we may actually learn, learn a lot more uh, through the scientific method, and so it's something that we uh, absolutely endorse. I would say that compared to safety uh, in medicine, Patient confidentiality is probably the next most important thing that is being stressed and focused in medicine today. You are absolutely assured that your name will not be given or sold to any uh, device or drug company for future use. We go to extreme measures to maintain patient confidentiality. When the data is analyzed, it's always de-identified so that no person can be linked to a particular outcome. And so uh, extreme measures are really employed to guarantee the confidentiality and safety of the patients that are part of clinical trials. I think the patients should always let one family member know and discuss uh, whether or not they should become enrolled in a clinical trial. Um, while we certainly don't anticipate adverse events, uh, because it's an experiment, there's always a small possibility that something could happen and that somebody close to you should know that you may be enrolled in a clinical trial. So absolutely, I would strongly encourage uh, communication with a family member. Thank you so much for your interest. I hope that you would one day consider becoming enrolled in a clinical trial.